All right, so I have some expectation of safety while driving at this point because um, I am uh, northbound on I-55, about to cross over from Louisiana into Mississippi. Uh, traffic is cleared up. Baton Rouge took me about two hours to get through. Um, I did a couple of videos in standstill tra traffic, but those were uh, not public ones. Um, so I'm en route to Jackson, Mississippi, um, where I'm going to hang out for a couple of days. Uh, with the woman who's responsible for getting me into improv in the first place, uh, Kathy. Her last name's Griffin now, not that Kathy, Kathy Griffin. Uh, used to be Kathy Rasmussen, and she's the woman who, um, brought Comedy Sports to Bakersfield. And without her doing that, there's a good chance that, uh, well, I mean, I would have found improv a different way, I suppose, maybe. A lot of things would have been very different. Um, but I'll save that for when I talk to her. Because I'll do a video with her. Um, but that's where I'm going right now. Uh, having left Texas yesterday, um, I keep wrestling with how, when, if, how much of the online vampire game uh, I need to include in the story, in the chronicle. So, particularly Alex, if you watch this and you have questions that you want expanded on, please feel free to ask them. All of my videos are open to, if you have questions, even if you want to do bits or mock me or whatever, I don't care. If you have questions, uh, feel free to post them and I'll get them answered. Um, so, when I stopped tabletop gaming with Kevin's group, I uh, found myself without a regular table. And so, with the internet growing in size and popularity, uh, and so many people coding HTML, um, I found... I went to the publishing company's website for Vampire the Masquerade and I discovered that they ran an HTML chat room called Shadows. Um, and Shadows was, when I found it, it was one room uh, and you could play anything you want. It was basically a chat room that was devoted to roleplay, which sounds really simplified and passe now because the, the whole thing has grown so much in the last close to quarter century but at the time um, there weren't all that many options out there so it was a place to come play uh, whatever character you wanted to play in an open role-playing setting um, and so the character that was most recently on my mind um, and that I wanted to explore to a greater degree was Morrigan, uh, a.k.a. Dane Tiernan, uh, who then anglicized his name to Daniel Tiernan. Um, but his street name was Morrigan. And so I started playing Morrigan in the chat, and I ran with a piece of his backstory that was separate from Kevin's table that I could then explore. I made him an archon uh, for Just Carpetrodon, and I didn't tell anybody... Uh, just made him an undercover agent, essentially, who rolled into town with the rest of his cell, uh, Top Hat, Sylvia, and Mark. And I explored those relationships, and I explored that backstory. And I started playing with a lot of people online, and um, we wanted to formalize and expand the game. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to tell the story while I was in Texas was one of the first people I met was a guy named Josh. Uh, and Josh played a character named the Archer. And the Archer was an Anarch, uh, which means uh, in another video I described the Camarilla and the Sabbat. And the Camarilla are the ones who want to hide from humanity and live amongst them. 
and the Sabbat are the ones who want to be the top of the food chain, abuse the power, exert their dominance over humanity. And that's actually important to the online, very important to the online story. Uh, well, the Anarchs are a group of vampires, a political sect of vampires that reject both and just want to be left alone. And a lot of them are from the Bruja clan, which is what Morrigan is. And a lot of them are individualists. So uh, Josh's character, the Archer, was an Anarch. And Morgan, being an individualist Bruja, they had a lot in common. And so I ended up playing, role-playing with Josh a lot in the chat. Um, but just Carpetrodon hates Anarchs. So I had to explore why Morgan wanted to be around Anarchs and yet was under a directive to destroy them. So there were some fun relationships in there to play. Josh was probably the first person from online that I met in real life. He came out to Bakersfield uh, and visited us while we still lived in Bakersfield. Um, it would have been weird if he'd come and visit us while we lived in Phoenix. But I met a bunch of players and we ended up solidifying and expanding on the environment. The first problem we had to solve was the fact that you could play anything in the room. So we needed a political environment that would allow for Sabat and Camarilla and Anarch to mix. And you can see how complicated that is. Uh, and we later had to account for werewolves and changelings and the occasional wraith. Um, because people could play whatever they wanted to play. Uh, so we came up with the Casablanca plan, which was the idea that Shadows was neutral ground that the Sabat and the Camarilla uh, agreed on because they lived in contested territory and they needed a place to be able to conduct intersect business if they needed to. Because there are a lot of people that reject that idea for a story because the two wouldn't mix. But we came up with an environment where they were forced to mix, uh, to make it make sense, which kind of came from the improv background of trying to justify stuff. Um, so we went looking for a city that hadn't been done in a source book and that we could uh, use as our template um, for, the, for the environment we were building. So we essentially wrote a source book, an online source book, called Necropolis by Night. Oh, I should back up a step before I get there. Um, through role-playing uh, in that situation, um, as an Archon, I considered Morgan's job to stabilize the Camarilla City, and so he was helpful in trying to meet with each clan and have them select uh, a primogen who was, uh, yeah, this is my cop pose. I think there's a cop coming up on me. Um, I look terrible from this angle. Uh, select a primogen, which is the vampire who is highest ranked. It's not a cop, it's just a black SUV. Uh, the highest ranking vampire in each clan who serve as an advisor to the prince. And so Morgan, having done that, I mean, he met with each clan, even the ones that he doesn't personally like, um, to help them stabilize their organization. And in return, all of those primogen decided to elect Morgan the Prince. Or appoint Morgan the Prince. Um, and so that was an interesting role-playing challenge to me. So in my outside back, same way I write stories for Tempest in my head, I wrote stuff that I didn't have anybody play to justify those decisions where Morgan went, well, how can I be a prince if I'm an archon? And Petrodon opted to station that cell in Necropolis to let Morgan be prince while remaining an archon undercover so that he could stabilize the city and keep the city stable. Because a couple years is nothing to, to vampires like this. Morgan himself is 400 years old. Petrodon, Petrodon's like a thousand. Um, and this one may get chopped into a couple of videos because there's a lot of story from the chat room. Um, so once Morgan was appointed prince, 
uh, or named Prince by the Primogen Council. Uh, the player I was working most with, uh, she lives in Phoenix, her name is Gina, uh, and she's of Clan Tremere, which are uh, mages, sorcerers that became vampires. Um, she became Morgan Seneschal, uh, which is second in command, essentially. Um, because, I mean, Morgan's idea would have been stabilize the city, pass it off to somebody, uh, who's gonna keep, fake your own death, do something. But he hadn't thought that far ahead, because I don't think that far ahead. Um, and so, Gina and I set to work, uh, framing the source book. This got us into a bit of trouble, because, uh, people complained that we were uh, taking in-character power and translating it to out-of-character power as well. Um, which, okay, if that bothers you, that's fine. At one point, Gina bought a server for White Wolf. I don't know why. I don't know why she, under, she shouldered that expense for a publishing company that makes millions of dollars. I guess because that's not a source of their revenue, and if she didn't, nobody would have. But she bought a server that enabled them to do a Java chat. Um, evolution of our chat was it went from one room to two rooms, and then we got them to install eight HTML rooms so we could have different rooms for different sects to hang out in. But nobody wanted to do that. Everybody still came to Shadows where everybody mixed. Uh, even though there was a Club Darkness that was Sabbat only, and there was a Werewolf chat room, and there was a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, and then the evolution was Gina gave them a server and they established a Java chat. And in the Java chat, they had set room because I went away from it and then I came back to it years later. And, in the, and I discovered, I walked into the city after having been away for a long time, discovered that there were an anchor set of about 10 rooms, but then you could create your own rooms to do whatever scene you wanted and you could make them private and you could give make them passworded and there was a lot of cool stuff to it all of that is actually important to the story um so gina and i and the primogen councils because we were outsourcing the writing of each clan's role in the city to the primogen to talk to their players and go hey help define this and we as a group will make this a reality and we did the same thing with the sabbat we did the same thing with the Anarchs, because um, it's important to note at this point that in looking for a city that we could template off of, we needed one that wasn't already a source book and geographically allowed us to divide it the way that we had. And so the city we came down with uh, was Kansas City. And we divided it up that the Camarilla held Kansas City, Missouri and the Sabbat held Kansas City, Kansas, um, mostly because of population levels. There were more Camarilla players, and Kansas City, Missouri is bigger. Uh, the Anarchs, thanks to Josh and his players, claimed Independence, Missouri as their home, which I thought was really clever. Uh, so we didn't call it Kansas City, we called it Necropolis, but everybody knew what it was. And we started to build a Necropolis by sight, by night, uh, sourcebook online, and I believe Gina used GeoCities. So anytime somebody new came to the chat, we had resources we could direct them to, and we could tell them how to get to their primogen, and we could actually follow largely the way the game is structured uh, on a lot of levels. The other thing it's important to note uh, that got us in some trouble. Uh, ironically, maybe, was the idea of consensual role-playing. Uh, we laid out that nobody had to play any story that they wanted, didn't want to play, and that was to solve some player issues we had that largely revolved around the Sabbat, because the Sabbat characters wanted to be abusive and dominant, and not everybody, people didn't like the way they behaved in Shadows, uh, and so they wanted to be able to separate out and go, you know what, I don't want to play that story. That's not what I feel like doing. And they could say no. 
and whether it's an in-character and out-of-character thing, that pissed off the Sabbat players because they wanted to be true to their characters and just be abusive to whoever they wanted to be abusive to. Um, and I remember one guy in particular, his name is John. Um, John made that real personal, and this would be a good one for Alex. He may not remember it. Uh, he definitely doesn't remember it. Because we had shared baby pictures of Alex online, uh, and John, the Sabat player, got a hold of Alex's baby pictures and decided to use them in his story that uh, babies were turning up um, mangled in dumpsters, missing limbs. Uh, and yeah, he used Alex's pictures to illustrate his story which really upset us, and Gina called the FBI over. Um, so yeah, we, we laid out this, if you don't want to play the story, somebody propose, it has to be consensual. You have to play, uh, people don't have to play what you want them to play. Well, we got blamed, we got criticized for that, because people said that was just a way of me protecting the princehood that I could then decline to play any story that involved me being dethroned. And while that may have been a byproduct, I, that was not intentional. That wasn't the reason we did it. And I was pretty clear that if there was a story that threatened my, uh, my character's um, hold on the princedom, I had no problem playing it. It just was going to have to be a story that I wanted to play. Uh, because people were coming in wanting to do the weirdest stuff. Um, I remember there was a kindred of the East who wanted to introduce himself, which was cool, but I didn't know the rules of the, of the system. So there was a certain point where I had to bag off. Then the Sabat players would come up with other characters uh, that they could play in an attempt to assassinate my character. Uh, the one I remember, which I always found a little bit amusing, um, was they decided to hire a pack of red caps, which are changelings, they're, they're fairies, that can eat anything. And so their storyline was that this pack of red caps they had brought in were going to eat Morrigan. Uh, so there would be nothing left and he couldn't regenerate. And I was like, yeah, that's stupid. I don't want to play it. And so they go, oh, you just don't want to play something where you might die. I'm like, no, that's not the problem. Which will become apparent in a few minutes. Um, so yeah, I got criticized for not being able to tell the difference between in character and out of character. I got criticized for, I mean, I, and I was putting in hours writing material, coordinating material, co collaborating with Gina to get the side up, collaborating with the players from various clans to get their source pages written in the way that they wanted them written, and then writing stuff myself that nobody else wanted to write, and then running it past those players and editing, and God, it was a ton of hours, um, but it was fun, and then it takes so much shit. There were so many times that Gina and I just wanted to go, yeah, it's not worth it. Let's just stop. Um, I'm going to do the cop move just to be safe. Also not a cop. Um, so let's see. Where do I go from there? Eventually, the Camarilla players got tired of the Sabat abuses. Um... And so we went, all right, if, if you want to see a story that you won't agree to play, uh, and see, we wanted them to see what it felt like to be on the other end of that. So up to this point in White Wolf's publishing history, um, no Camarilla City had ever figured out how to repel a Sabat Crusade. And a Sabat Crusade is when the Sabat invades a city um, and tries to take it over. They do it by disrupting the masquerade uh, and flaunting vap vampirism as much as they possibly can, uh, terrifying the city. There are a lot of phases to a crusade. But according to White Wolf's literature, uh, nobody knew how to do it. No, the Camarilla did not know how to 
turn back a Sabbat incursion. So we wrote it. We were like, all right, if I was the Camarilla in this situation that I wanted to purge the city of Sabbat, here's what I would do. And so we wrote that story. We closed all the bridges between Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri. We put the garbage stri- garbage men on strike. We put the firefighters on strike. We put the policemen on strike, but only in Kansas City, Kansas. So the living conditions uh, went downhill uh, for the for the Sabbat. Now this may not sound like much, but the key to it is uh, the food supply. So now all of a sudden the Sabbat vampires don't have as much food and they don't have anywhere to go because they can't get across the river to Missouri. And so, uh, and, and the Camarilla steps up their security between the two states. And so the Sabbat has to turn on themselves. And then during the daytime, the Camarilla are hunting down and destroying uh, hungry Sabbat vampires who don't have much to draw on. They're not doing it themselves, by the way. The Camarilla are better than the Sabbat in a couple of areas, and one of them is uh, keeping ghouls, which is feeding human beings and bending their will to, to the vampire's will so that they can act essentially as slaves. So the ghouls were working during the daytime to root out Sabbat vampires and destroy them. And all we really wanted to do was go, look, it's consensual. I mean, the, the environment works because we all agree to it. And if you don't want to agree to it, we can write stories that are bad for you just as much as you can write stories that are bad for us. And the Sabbat players hated it. Um, of course they did. And they, they demanded that this was a violation of the masquerade by the prince of the city and that the higher-ups in the Camarilla... Um, would call him to task uh, for what he had done in his jeopardy, his jeopardizing the masquerade. So I went, okay, let's play that story. Um, and we recruited, there's an inner circle to the Camarilla that's composed of the highest ranking member of each clan um, above the Justicars. I mean, vampires are so old that they're practically legend. And so we went, let's play Morgan's trial. And so Morgan was arrested, and he was brought to uh, Vienna uh, and tried. And we played that trial. And since it's a Camarilla proceeding, we had we had the, the clan select who was going to play the member of the clan, of the inner circle. Um, and the only hitch in there was that we had um, a Sabbat player, a guy named Dean, uh, who lived in Boston. He played uh, the, the inner circle member for the clan that's diametrically oppo- opposed to the Bruja. Uh, it's a clan called the Ventru. And they're the clans that are usually in charge of cities. Usually the prince of the city is a Ventru. Uh, a good percentage of the time, at least half the time. Uh, and so we had a Sabbat player that I respected and played with um, play that character, play the Venture Inner Circle member. Um, and we ran the trial, and we were like, didn't break the masquerade. Came close, sure, but this is how we would do it, and we solved the problem for you. And the trial came back, uh, six votes acquittal, one vote against, and the against was the Ventru vote, and Dean was like, I would have voted acquittal, but that's not how a Ventru would vote. I was like, yeah, absolutely, I'm cool with that. Um, Because he was like, you guys ran the story, the the story was the core of what you did, and it it was respectable, and it was very well done. Um, so Morgan went free, which pissed off the Sabah players again. Um, side note, a few years later, um, White Wolf put out a source book called, uh, New York by Night. Um, and it was 
their published version of how the Camarilla would repel a Sabat incursion. Yeah. And I read it and I was like, it featured its main character, the guy behind the whole thing, is a Bruja Archon by the name of Theo Bell. Um, and Bell is an escaped slave uh, who was turned to a vampire. Um, and he's somebody that's figured in a lot of their literature since they published that book. Um, but yeah, Bruja Archon sounded mighty familiar to me. Especially when you read the book and you find that all of their tactics are pretty much what we did, with the exception of one. Um, and that was that they found, they, they had the Sabat vampires tagged with a piece of radioactive material that had a half-life to it so that the ghouls could find the vampires more easily during the day. That way you didn't have to role play, because we role played it in a lot of cases. Uh, they just put it in a book, so you'd know that that's how it was done. But we thought that was cool. Somebody brought it to my attention and I pointed out, yeah, everything we write is under the White Wolf banner uh, and technically they own it. If we wrote it on their server, they own it. So it would have been nice to get a uh, thank you in the book to the chat room players who put together all that material and gave them essentially a first draft of what they published. Um, but it was it was cool just looking at it and going, yeah, essentially we wrote the bones of that uh, and they fleshed it out. So New York by Night, I think I still have my New York by Night source book. Um, yeah, I'm still proud of it. I'm at 27 minutes, so I'm going to pause. There isn't a whole lot more to the chat room story, uh, but what's left is pretty powerful. So I'm going to call this part one. I'm going to cut a part two, uh, probably. I don't know. We'll see what kind of space I have left on the phone. It's getting a little dark. Probably cut it in a couple of days. Yep. So that's part one of the White Wolf server version of Morrigan, who never got above 8th generation, by the way. I was always bugged by the 6th generation thing. So I retreated him to 8th and left him there uh, with his original sire, Patricia Bolingbroke. Oh, shoot. That origin story is important, too. I'll save that for the next one. Yeah, his origin's a little uh, different under Patricia because there's an extra key in there that has to do with who she is, the Anarch Revolution, and the foundation of the Sabbat. So we'll start with that next time. Leaving off. Peace.